All right, fam, so we are back with another crazy video. Now, this video right here, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, the thumbnail caught my attention, and I, wa I watched the video, and I was like, yeah, I have to show y'all boys this, okay? I have to show y'all this video. So this video, is the title of it is They're Lying to You, and it had a picture of Kamala, and had a picture of Donald Trump, and, bro, I was like, right there, I was like, okay, yeah, I gotta click on it, like, let, let me know something that I don't know, you feel me, without further ado, man, we finna go ahead and get into this video, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, y'all, y'all gotta subscribe to the channel, it literally takes two seconds, scroll a little bit, like, scroll, like, one inch down, hit that little subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and we in business, baby, so without further ado, Let's get it. Let's go. Politicians know that invoking Jesus helps them win votes, and they do it because it works. But what happens when they twist the word of God, misquote scripture, and manipulate faith for political gain, all while millions believe that they're being told the truth? From Obama's strategic shift in the left's use of religious language to Trump's 2 Corinthians citation, these actions have led many Christians to question just how much politicians are exploiting faith for political gain. So let's uncover the real impact of these manipulations and why it's more crucial than ever to guard your faith against these subtle distortions. I'm a Christian by choice. Of course, my faith plays a lot, a big part in my life. I pray a lot. We have a duty to our God and to one another. The Bible oh. certainly is. Oh, Kamala, please. Oh, Kamala, please. Kamala, killer, Tapina, man, whatever your name want to be. You got so many different accents, so many different names. I don't know, uh, but please. Uh, <laughs> Don't mention, no, don't, don't mention our God, man. Like, like you really serving. I, I mean, y'all may say I'm judging, but hey, I'm not judging. The Bible say you know a person by their fruits. You know what I'm saying? So hey, I'm not judging here. I'm judging righteously. You feel me? I'm judging righteously. Jesus said that. Judge righteously. But dang, I'm a Christian by choice. Of course, my faith plays a lot, a big part in my life. I pray a lot. We have a duty. To our God and to one another. The Bible certainly is one of, if not, I mean, it is the book. According to this poll, you probably want your preferred candidate to display strong faith or at least stand up for Christian values. With most Americans identifying as Christian, it's really no surprise that politicians often proclaim their faith and reference biblical themes. In the 2016 election, over 55% of weekly churchgoers supported Donald Trump, and in 2020, Joe Biden managed to gain the endorsement of 1,600 Catholic, Protestant, and evangelical faith leaders. These numbers show just how pivotal religious language and endorsements are for both sides. But but here's the irony. Neither side believes that there's very many true Christians on the other side. Both are convinced that the other uses the Bible as a political prop, not out of genuine belief. And to some extent, they're both right. Take a look at this clip from June of 2006. You're looking at Barack Obama speaking to progressive faith leaders at the Building a Covenant for a New America conference. And during his speech, Obama argued passionately that his party should stop avoiding religion and religious language. And little did they know, this would be a massive turning point for the Democratic Party. He said he found it absurd to leave personal religious beliefs out of the public policy debates. Of progressives, he said, If we scrub language of all religious content, we forfeit the imagery and terminology through which millions of Americans understand both their personal morality and social justice. He told his listeners to imagine Lincoln's second inaugural address without reference to Judgment of the Lord or Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech without references to all of God's children. He added that this wasn't just a rhetorical loss, but a failure to tap into the moral fabric that Christianity has woven into America. But it's also clear that this was a strategic move to connect with the broader base of voters. Now, whether or not Obama's intentions were sincere, his religious language set a new tone for the Democratic Party for other politicians to follow. Now, even though a lot of people thought Obama pulled it off right when this man took the stage. Well, let's just say that it didn't end well. Howard Dean's attempt to invoke religious language backfired big time. Trying to appeal to Christian voters, he began talking more and more about the Bible. But according to Tim Grieve, he could never quite get his mouth around that line from Matthew about the rich man and the camel and the eye of the needle. And while his meaning was clear, we're not sure what authority Dean was citing when he said that Republicans get two points from the New Testament while Democrats get about 25. And during his presidential run, Dean was asked about his favorite book in the New Testament. His response? Job, which of course was in the Old Testament. He made it even worse by adding, in some of the books in the New Testament, the ending of the book of Job is different. There's one book where there's a more optimistic ending, which we believe was tacked on later. See, uh, see, see he messed himself up, first, first of all. First, <laughs> first of all, 
you got to know what books is which in the new and the old. You know what I'm saying? You got to know which one is which. You feel me? Second of all, people that don't actually study the Bible will fall for this nonsense. You know what I'm saying? They will fall for these for these politicians. They will fall for this stuff because they don't know the Bible. The fact that you actually have politicians out here using the Bible for a political gain, man, God's judgment is going to come upon them because, bro, that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? You can get voters by not using religion to 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 give to give yourself more voters if that makes sense like you can you you can gain voters naturally just by having policies that's for america just by caring about america you can really gain votes you know what i'm saying like you can gain voters you can gain a lot of people to vote for you by just having the right policies understanding the value that american people want and just put in america before any other country you know what i'm saying you can gain those votes now, granted, most people don't vote off common sense. You know what I'm saying? Most people vote off emotions. Most people vote off because of what their parents vote for or because of what they what they was raised into. But again, trying to bring religion into this and, and bring more people to vote for you because of their faith, that's crazy to me, bro. That is crazy. Now, I know that the Republican Party and the Democrat Party are corrupt they're like you you can't tell me that one party is better than the other one and the other party like you can't tell like they're both they both have flaws because again they're both ran by people that are flawed so anything that is ran by a human being that is flawed i truly believe that that is imperfect and it is corrupt simple as that the only perfect human being to ever walk this earth it was god you know what i'm saying it was jesus christ who came down as god in the flesh you feel me so that's the only one who was perfectly uh, able to walk this walk in this life. You know what I'm saying? So none of us can do it. So Republican Party is corrupt. Democratic Party is corrupt. Both parties are corrupt because both are ran by man. Both are ran by imperfect human beings. Simple as that. But let's go ahead and finish. Joe being in the New Testament, that is crazy. That is absurd. That is wild. Ooh, jeez. People need to go ahead and read their Bibles. Yeah, incorrect. This showed that he had no idea what he was talking about. And an hour later, Dean tried to apologize, but it was too late. The incident was widely reported and the damage was already done. And a month later, Dean dropped out of the presidential race. While Dean's attempt to use scripture failed, others used it in more controversial ways. What many would consider to be the most egregious misuse of scripture by Democrats may be their attempts to biblically justify abortion. This man, Senator Raphael Warnock, a self-proclaimed pro-choice pastor, has made the headlines with statements like this. Well, my, my stance as a pro-choice pastor is not in spite of my Christian identity, it's because of my Christian identity. I'm a Matthew 25 Christian. Uh, you know, in as much as you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. And so that's the work that I've tried to do as a pastor. But if we're talking about the least of these, I can't think of a more vulnerable group of people than the unborn. So as we've seen, the left's attempts to use Jesus has often led to missteps and controversies. But the right's approach, while more sophisticated, presents its own set of challenges. While the left has stumbled in its attempts to harness Christian language, the right has mastered a different approach. One that skillfully intertwines with patriotism, yet often crosses a delicate line leading to consequences that can be just as troubling. You probably know that most conservative politicians talk about their faith and their love for the Bible. But if you listen closely, a lot of them reveal that they're not as familiar with the Bible as they'd like for us to believe. That's After nice. the failed assassination of Donald Trump, some were quick to quote the Bible, but not always accurately. For example, a man at the RNC cited Ephesians 6.11 as a sign since Trump was shot at 6.11 p.m. But he got the verse completely wrong. And conservative commentator Megyn Kelly tried to cite the same verse in Ephesians, but called it, You read a piece 611. And these apparent superficial uses of scripture extend to even more influential figures as well, like Donald Trump Jr. A few years ago, he tweeted, likelihood of Nancy Pelosi praying for Trump is about the same as the likelihood of Satan running around quoting the scriptures. But of course, Satan did quote the scriptures in Matthew 4 when he was citing Psalm 91. And even Trump himself, though he claimed that the Bible was his favorite book, when pressed, he continually struggled to name his favorite verse and famously referred to 2 Corinthians as 2 Corinthians now, the focus here is not on individual judgment, but on the broader trend of superficial uses of faith and politics. These sorts of mistakes, while minor, highlight concerns about the authenticity of their professed faith and, more importantly, the prevalence of this troubling trend. And just as the left has taken extreme forms of using the Bible to justify political actions, some of the January 6th rioters used Christian language and biblical references on their signs and in their chants, and even considered the protest to be a new march around Jericho. This shows just how easily Christian language can be co-opted to 
justify behavior that's completely at odds with the teachings of Jesus. This is why discernment is crucial. Misusing scripture can lead to dangerous justifications for harmful actions. And as we go into the next election cycle, it's clear that we're going to see more of this. It's about truly understanding what love thy neighbor means. The Bible teaches us so much. We must make America pray again. To be clear, this video is not about choosing sides or aligning with one political ideology over another. What I care about is maintaining the integrity of our faith in the face of political manipulation. Both the left and the right have used the Bible as a political tool, often at the expense of its meaning. As Christians, it's up to us to seek the true meaning of scripture and ensure that our faith isn't being manipulated for political ends. The trend of co-opting Jesus for political agendas is disturbing, especially when it's misleading Christians who aren't studying their Bibles. If we're not vigilant, we can be easily manipulated by this stuff. It's important to remember that political ideology and Christian doctrine are not the same and it's up to you to discern the difference and that requires intentional Bible study. Psalm 119.105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. This means that with each step we take, God's word will keep us on the right path as long as we allow it to be our guide. It's through his word that we gain true wisdom and true discernment. So the only way that we can avoid being deceived is by studying the Bible for ourselves and in community. When we ground ourselves in scripture, we can better see through the distortions and remain steadfast in our faith no matter where the political winds might blow. Now, if you've made it this far, go ahead and hit the like button on the way out as it really does help us in. Man, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, bro. This was deep, okay? This, because if you don't know, if you are new to this channel, I am I am a young Christian, you know, and I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm a politician, but however, I have been studying. Well, I'm not gonna say studying, but I have been trying to, you know, just do a little bit more research on on politics and just you know, figure out the different parties, the difference in the parties, the Democratic and the, and the Republican Party, like just trying to figure out the differences in those and even the people that's running in both in both parties. You got Kamala for the Democrats, you got uh, Trump for the Republicans. So just trying to really figure out who I want to vote for because this will be my first year of voting. However, I already knew that, number one, before I even got into politics, my number one thing that I say is that I'm Jesus first. I'm Jesus first before I'm Trump 2024. I'm Jesus 2024. He mentioned Psalms 119 verse 105. I have one um, that I also just been studying throughout the weeks. It's, a it's Psalms 119 verse, uh, I think verse 9 through 11. It states that how can a, a young person stay pure by obeying your word? I have tried hard to I have tried hard to find you. Please don't let me wander away from your commands. I have stored your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. That's Psalms 119 verse 9 through 11. And I want to look at that last part, right? Okay, the last part, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. That word right there, that one little, that one little sentence right there, it just tells everything. Is that the word of God needs to be in your heart. You know what I'm saying? It needs to be in your heart because once it's in your heart, your actions and everything around you start to change. Your life start to change because it's in your heart. See, memorizing the scriptures, that's okay. That's cool. Yeah, you can memorize it. But memorizing up here, it, it, it would do a little bit of something, but it being in your heart would do a lot. Okay, it would do a lot. And I only say that because it seemed like a lot of politicians or a lot of, you know, a lot of politicians, it seemed as if they... Are trying to they're they're using the Bible for this political gain, but they're not allowing the scriptures to change their heart. They're not allowing the scriptures to be in their heart. You can see it by their personal lives. You know what I'm saying? End of the day, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, like we we should go out there and vote. This is not a video to stop people from voting, or this is not nothing to you know tear down the other party and tear down this part. Like this is none of that. But it's truly just to wake up because if you are a follower of Jesus Christ or yeah, if you you're if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you see that these politicians are using our faith against us to make us vote for them. But in reality, what we need to do is number one, we need to stand on the word of God first above everything. It don't have to be Trump 2024 first. It should be Jesus Christ 2024 first. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we need to understand that right now what we're going through in Ephesians, it tells us that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting against spiritual principality. So we need to understand that this is a spiritual war and us voting for Trump is not going to even help not a single bit with the spiritual war that we're going against. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a spiritual battle and he's still flesh. He's still mere human. So therefore, him voting him in office, it will help in the physical sense, in the physical world, in the physical realm. 
But in a spiritual sense, it's not going to help at all. It's still going to be a lot of killing, violence, all type of stuff that's still going to happen because right now we're going through a spiritual war. And our, and his, and our political votes and our political views, it can't change what's going on spiritually in America. All we can do is pray for our politicians and pray that they come to the Lord and pray that they're being led by the Lord in order to lead America in the way that it needs to go. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I love each and every one of y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video in the comment section below. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.